You're about to see a film of a man breaking a world's record. That record breaker is one of these three men. What is your name, please? My name is John Pennell. My name is John Pennell. My name is John Pennell. Only one of these men is the real John Pennell. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, the host of television's American musical theater, Earl Wrightson, and Kitty Carlisle, on to tell the truth with your host, Bud Collier. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Brought to you this week by Easy On Spray Starch, with the exclusive formula that will not scorch. Good evening, panel. Good evening, Good evening Bud. Oh, my, nice to be with you. Earl, it's nice to have you with us this evening. Thank you, Bud. And I, uh... Special privilege, because let's see, you are My your... first game show, I'm terrified. <laughs> Up front, I would like to complete, uh, to complete ignorance and total confusion. It won't be granted, I'm sorry, because right. we know that it's not true. You're opening here at the Latin Quarter in New York here, right? Yes, it'll be all this, all this month. Be great, there. great. You'll be there for the whole month? Yes. We'll get over there and see you. Panel, please open those envelopes, if you will, please, for the first time, and follow along as I read. I, John Pennell, am a champion pole vaulter. Since March of this year, I have broken the world pole vaulting record seven times. The greatest thrill of my life happened on August 24th, 1963. On that date, I became the first person in history to pole vault over 17 feet. Signed, John Pennell. <laughs> These three gentlemen all claim to be John Pennell, champion pole vaulter. First one to go over 17 feet. Let's start with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Mm. Uh, number three, uh, to what kind of a pole do you attribute the success, plus yourself, of course? Uh, <laughs> well, I, I use a fiberglass pole. Thank you. Uh, number two, have you ever gone over 17 feet before? No, I haven't. Number one, did you ever go over 17 before? No, I have not. Uh, number three, where did this event take place? Uh, on University of Miami track. Thank you. Uh, do you uh, number three, do you think you can ever go over 17 again? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, number three, how many over 17 did you go? 17 uh, two? 17? 17 feet, three quarters of an inch. Thank you. Uh, number one, um, what was the old, before the fiberglass poles came in, what was the old height that they used to do? Who was, you know, what was the height that they did before? It was around 15 feet. Thank you. Earl. How long have the fiberglass, uh, number one, how long have the uh, fiberglass poles been in use? They came in about a year and a half ago, introduced by a Finnish fellow by the name of Penty Nicola. And number one, what was the previous record to this record of over 17 feet? The previous record was held by myself also was 16 feet, 8 and 3 quarters inches. And prior to that, number one? I broke, record. I broke my own record seven times. All right. Uh, you took that, that uh, bamboo pole away from me for quite a ways there. <laughs> Actually, number two, what was the highest ever jump with a bamboo pole? 15 feet 8 inches with a bamboo pole. Kitty. Number three, is the pole uh, according to your own height? Does it vary for each pole jumper? Uh, well, <coughs> pardon me. They make them uh, in three different lengths, 14, 15, 16 feet. Depending on your height? Uh, not, not altogether, no. Depending on your choice? Yes. Number two, who measures this? If you don't knock down something, how do they know how high you vaulted? <laughs> they measure it. They measure it before and after the jump. How? Just by taking a tape, tape to the top of the crossbar. But you don't knock it down. Well, no, I try not to. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, when you fall, what do you fall on? Usually sawdust, wood shavings. Number three, when you fall, if, if, do you fall on your back? Uh, yes, uh, partly. Is there quite a jolt? Uh, sometimes. Tom, post. Thank you, bud. What else do you fall on, number three? 
No, no. I won't just, uh, I'm not speaking anatomically. I mean, uh, what else breaks your fall besides your person? Uh, they're using foam rubber in some places now. Just a big sheet of foam rubber there? Well, it's uh, a bunch of blocks of foam rubber put together. Thank you. Uh, uh, number two, what would you say was a, a good high school pole vault? A good high school? You yes. mean a high school pole vaulter? Well, what height would he reach if he were really a good high school pole vaulter? They can get up to 16 feet, uh, ones that I know. Very well, that's it. The time has gone for any further questioning. Will you kindly vote now? Mark your ballot. And do it, of course, as always, without any consultation whatsoever, as you vote for number one, number two, or number three. Our team of challengers will be awarded $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked, panel? Very well, let's see how we did. Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number three. Uh, uh, I figured that... Uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> that uh, a guy that just, you know, did all that, I, I know it's a very hard sport, and uh, I figured he'd have to be in really excellent shape, so uh, number three looked like he was in good shape, and I don't think uh, high school pole vaulters get up to 16 feet. I'm just not sure about that. Anyway, I thought it was number three. Peggy. I voted for number three, too. Uh, I think all look in good shape to me. But uh, uh, I saw, uh, saw a pole vault once on television, and I thought they fell into a lot of boxes. And the thing is, those foam rubber blocks would look like boxes. So that's why I voted for number three. Okay, Earl. I voted not very confidently, as you can see from the size of the number from number two. I felt that his knowledge of a previous uh, record... Uh, well, that impressed me, uh, rather than just breaking your own record, so I thought he knew Kitty. it. Kitty, I, I voted for number one, because he's the only one whose forearms I could see, and I thought they were in better shape than the other one's forearms. <laughs> <laughs> I know that, but also when he talked about breaking his own records, he seemed to me to have a kind of quiet pride and modesty. All right, there we have it then. There are two for three, one for two, and one for one, and with that we go into the winner's or loser's circle. Let's see as we learn which of these young men actually is the current holder of the pole vaulting record and is, of course, the champion pole vaulter. So will the real John Fennell please stand up? Jump up, in fact. <laughs> John, our congratulations to you. That's quite a feat, and uh, hope you reign supreme for a long time to come. We'd like to thank also uh, our CBS station in Miami, which is WTVJ, for providing us with that excellent film you saw, uh, John's Championship Vault. It was a real good one. Well, let's find out about your two sidekicks here now, uh, one of whom whose muscles uh, won him at least one vote. Number one, what is your real name, and what do you really do? My name is Richard Knudsen. I'm an ensign in the United States Navy aboard the Cruiser Springfield. Thank you. And number two, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Warren Young, and I'm a sales manager at the uh, American Heritage Publishing Company. Well, well, you did a good job of fooling the panel because the 50% job with them is a good one, believe me. And at uh, $250 each, there are two incorrect votes. It's $500 total for you to take off with you. That comes to you, of course, from, from Easy On and our sincere thanks. You'll also receive a package of gift products from Easy On on your way out. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us. Continued success to you, John, and God bless you. I present our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Margot McMenemy. My name is Margot McMenemy. My name is Margot McMenemy. Please listen while I read and follow along, panel, if you will. I, Margot McMenemy, am a fire lookout for the United States Forest Service. I live alone in a tower high atop a mountain. The nearest human being is 10 miles away, and my only communication with the outside world is by radio. 
I stay in the tower for eight months, and I am on duty 24 hours a day, seven days a week, reporting all illegitimate smokes to the forest rangers. My only companions from May until December are my guitar, my dog, and my pet red-tailed hawk. I am sometimes referred to as the bird lady of Cajon Mountain. Signed, Margot McMenemy. Here we present to you panel three ladies, all claiming to be Margot McMenemy, the bird lady, as she is known, of Cajon Mountain. And we start this cross-examination with Earl Wright. Earl? Number two, uh... What kind of radio do you use for your communication? Just an ordinary radio, sir. Uh, an ordinary radio. What kind of... How many tubes has it? I actually don't know. It's just an ordinary radio. You I pick see. it up, the telephone, I see. you press a button, and you call your dispatcher. Thank you. Number one, uh, you're on duty 24 hours a day. Uh, when, uh, what happens when you're asleep with forest fires? Well, if there are any fires in the area that I look at, generally they are reported by other people. I see. Uh, number one, what kind of radio do you use? Kitty. Uh, number three, what is a red-tailed hawk? Well, it's a particular kind of hawk that... What does he do for you as a pet? <laughs> well, I guess he doesn't really have a function. We're just very good friends. <laughs> <laughs> number one, what kind of songs do you play on your guitar? Well, I'm just learning. <laughs> Number two, what do you call legitimate fires as opposed to illegitimate fires? Well, legitimate fires are fires that we, uh, let's say the United States Forest Service allows. They're fires that we know about. They're you not know where they're located. I think. They're Number three, site. what is the greatest fear of forest fire? Tom is the greatest fear of forest fire. <laughs> I'm certainly afraid of forest fire. Tom. <laughs> we had another lady look out here on yeah. To Tell the Truth. Remember? Number three, uh, do you know who that was? No, I don't. The lady Forest Fire Lookout? Do you, uh, number no. three, are you just learning to play the guitar as well? Number two, are you just learning to play the guitar? I, I like to think I can play it well. <laughs> do you, do you, John? Like, well, who is your favorite guitar player? Well, Besides actually, yourself, I mean, you know, just <laughs> someone else. Actually, someone who is really good is a, a good flamenco guitarist that I know of, Sequoia. Oh, I don't I've know. I've heard that. him in Mexico City. Thank you. Number two, do you know what uh, bluegrass style is, number two? Bluegrass style? Pardon me, sir? No, uh, bluegrass style. You know no, I just know the bluegrass perfume. <laughs> <laughs> That's a woman's Kentucky, answer for you. Something with Kentucky. Peggy. Number one, where is Cajon Mountain? It's located in Southern California. Thank you. Uh, number two, where do you get your food if you're up there 24 hours a day, seven months? Oh, we have regular dispatchers that the U.S. Forest Service uh, will send us around. Uh, number three, you make out a shopping list and the dispatcher goes and gets what you want? <laughs> yeah, well, I use the radio and I call in what I need and then the prevention man brings it up along with my water and kerosene. You get your, number and three, you that's it. Up. I'm sorry to say time is gone for any further questions. Just mark your ballots, please, now, panel. Mark them at once without change and no consultation, if you will, please. Vote for number one or vote for number two or vote for number three. All ballots marked? Very well. There's the last one. Okay. Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number one. She, she, she has nice, uh, bright eyes that look like they might spot forest fires. I hope she learns to play that guitar, because it can be a lot of company. <laughs> Peggy, what is your choice? I voted for number three, because she really sounds as though she likes that hawk. And, after all, if you're up there for seven months, you can't get your hair done, and she's got long hair. <laughs> couldn't get a haircut. Earl. I voted for number three. Uh, I keep getting back to that radio, which never did get satisfactorily answered, but she treated it rather casually and, and offhand. It seemed to be a part of her everyday thinking, so there you go. Okay. <laughs> Kitty. I voted for number three. I thought they all gave marvelous answers, but when number three answered Peggy's question about the food, she said the provincial man, and I thought this was a kind of technical term that slipped out very easily, so it might be number three. So, this time you're close to unanimity, aren't you? Three for number three, one for number one. Let's go with that into the truth circle and see who's right and who's wrong. As we learn now, which of these ladies actually is 
the Bird Lady of Cajon Mountain. So will the real Margot McMenemy please stand up? Thank you very much. What, what led you to that correct vote there, Tom? Tell Bud, me. I know every bird lady in America. What <laughs> <laughs> a bird lady. <laughs> oh, well, let's find out about the other two. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? I'm Kim Raphael. I work as a recreationist with the Department of Parks, City of New York, and we have lots of birds in our park. <laughs> And number three, you garnered most of the votes. What is your real name and what do you do? My name is Janet Saunders and I'm a modern dancer. I also work as a waitress at Chuck's Composite. <laughs> well, I'm sure you're happy at the checking of the score, which you probably have already done yourself. Three incorrect votes at $250 each, $750, ladies, is what you take along from us and from Easy On, as well as the gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Easy On. And our thanks to you for making our evening so bright. Good night and God bless you. <laughs> Meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Wendell Ferti. My name is Wendell Fertig. My name is Wendell Fertig. Panel, please follow along again as I read. I, Wendell Fertig, was an officer in the U.S. Army when the Japanese invaded the Philippines in 1942. I escaped into the jungles of Mindanao and joined the Filipino guerrillas. They asked me to become their leader. So with absolutely no authorization, I promoted myself to general. For the next three years, I led the guerrilla army against the Japanese invaders. We made bullets from curtain rods and telegraph lines from barbed wire. Our network of spies became the eyes and ears for General Douglas MacArthur. By the time the Americans recaptured Mindanao, I found myself in command of an army of 35,000 men and the head of a civil government complete with its own postal system, law courts, currency, factories, and hospital. Signed, Wendell Ferti. <laughs> These three gentlemen all claim to be Wendell Ferti, who had an amazing experience, leader of the Filipino guerrillas. We'll start this round with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, Bud. Uh, let me quickly ask, what do you do now, number? What have you done since the war, number three, please? I'm a retired regular army officer. Oh, number two, did, what did you do after the war? I'm in civilian life, in the travel industry. Travel industry, number one, what did you do after the war? Retired now in radio. I see. I'm surprised one of you didn't, like, take over Chicago or Cleveland. <laughs> uh, number three, when was the last time the United States Army, Army fought against Filipinos? 1903. What are the names of their opponents? Do you remember? We gave them a certain name. No. Uh, the Filipino bands that were, that were at war with the United States. We had to wipe them out. What were the names given to those bands? The Insurrectos. Well, yes. Number one, do you know? Aguinaldo let them. Uh, Peggy. Num I'll tell you number one. Number one, who was the man on the island of Cebu who captured the Japanese admiral? I don't know. Number three, do you know? Cushing. Thank you. Number two, where is Biak? That's in the Dutch East Indies. Thank you. Number three, did they let you stay a general after? Who were you demoted to? I returned to regular service as a colonel. Oh, Thank that's you. That's good. pretty good, yes. At number one, uh, who was the Japanese admiral at the Battle of Lady Gulf? Yama Yamagachi. Thank you. Number three, do you know the name of the Japanese admiral in the Battle of G Lady Gulf? I do not. Number two, do you? I do not. <laughs> Well, number three. <laughs> We're all right. Uh, number three, uh, where is uh, Salamoa? Salamoa. I do not know. Number two, where is Salamoa? I do not know. Number one, Salamoa? I don't know. Number one, where is Lay? 
Lady? Lay. Lay, I don't know. Um, number two... Kitty. Oh. <laughs> number two, Kitty. Uh, number three, uh, I'd like to say bravo to a very, very brave gentleman, whichever the one it is. Before I ask a very flippant question, uh, when you were demoted after having this enormous army at your disposal, how did you feel? What number? Number three. Let down. <laughs> <laughs> number one, can you tell me the name of the lieutenant who took MacArthur off the town on the PT boat? Buckley. Number two, do you agree with this? I do. Number three, do you agree with this? It was Buckley. Uh, number one, when you were commanding this whole thing, can you tell me the name of the language that the Filipinos used? Visayan. Number two, who is Mike Saisa? That's all the time we have, I'm sorry to say, but there we go. With what information you have obtained, mark your ballots now, please, at once. And uh, no consultation. As you vote for number one, number two, or number three. I can't. Wait all minute. ballots, I please. I can't. <laughs> You'll have to. I can't. <laughs> oh, it's too awful. <laughs> there we go. There's one to go, and there it is. Oh, all right, yeah. Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number two. I can't give a reason. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were all wonderful. And whoever did it is great. Peggy. I voted for number three because the man's name who captured the Japanese admiral was Cushing, as I remember, and, and Sable, and then he let him go afterwards. Because Earl? Excuse me. I voted for number one. Uh, he seemed to acknowledge about the language that was used uh, and the general authority of his other, like Buckley and so forth. Well, Kitty, you can go along with either one, two, or three. There's one for every one of them so far. I voted for number three on the basis of the answers about Cushing, and I don't think that was the language of the Filipinos that number one told me, but I was terribly torn. Their answers were marvelous. <laughs> well, there it is. This is the most widely split vote yet tonight. Let's go with it and see what we find as we reveal the truth in learning which one of these gentlemen actually is the very brave man who turned out to be the leader of the Filipino guerrillas. So will the real... Wendell Fertig, please stand up. Oh, it's, it's not, it's not. Fertig, do something. Fertig. Oh! oh. Yeah. <laughs> When I see the way they milk the suspense at the end, I'm concluded more and more that there's a lot of ham in all of it. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. We are mighty proud to be here with you, believe me. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Dick O'Brien. I'm a co-owner of radio station WCNX in Middletown, Connecticut. Wow. And number two, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Robert Wolf, and I'm president of Robert Reed Associates Hotel Representative. I'd like you all to know that Wendell Fertig's amazing story has been told in a book entitled They Fought Alone, written by John Keats and published by the J.B. Lippincott Company. Uh, very worth reading, I'm sure. Gentlemen, we thank you very much and hope you had as much fun as we did. And the score shows, of course, that there were two incorrect votes and at $250 each, that's a fat $500 you take away from Easy Off as well as the gift package of the fine products from the makers of Easy Off. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us. Good night and God bless you. <laughs>
This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, this program was pre-recorded.